This class is called Mathematical Assessment, and we've talked a lot about the history of assessment, how it's been used and abused through history, and how we don't like the way it's being used now. Let's look a little bit more about assessment, thinking from the perspective of a mathematics teacher. What is the definition of assessment? Well, it's the process of gathering evidence about what a student knows, what they are able to use, and even their disposition. How do they feel and act about and towards mathematics? And then we make inferences from that evidence for a variety of purposes. Assessment is used interchangeably with other terms such as testing, measurement and evaluation, or sometimes we have to distinguish between student assessment and assessment of a program. There are four phases to each assessment. First, we plan the assessment. What type of assessment? How will it be used? Who will do it? When will it be done? Where will it be done? Then we implement or gather the evidence. We do the assessment. We gather that information. Then we interpret our evidence or we assess the assessment. And last, we use those results to report or revise or make changes in our teaching plan. What are the purposes of assessment? Well, first, to improve instruction. It helps us to make instructional decisions, to check and see if our teaching methods are effective. What kind of outcome are we getting from our input? Second, it recognizes accomplishment. It evaluates what the students have achieved. It assigns them a grade. It also helps us when communicating with parents. We can tell them how well their students doing or not doing. Third, assessment promotes growth. As we evaluate student learning before instruction, during instruction, and after instruction, we can monitor their progress towards the goals and objectives of our course. Fourth, we use assessment to modify the program. We diagnose or evaluate the program. We may track students or we may select them for special projects or programs. How do we use assessment? Well, lots of stakeholders use assessment. The students use assessment to make decisions about themselves as learners. How am I doing? Is the way I'm studying helping me get better scores? Do I understand what's on the homework? Teachers use assessment to make decisions about how to effectively instruct their students. Am I reaching my higher students and engaging and challenging them? Am I reaching my lower students? Am I leaving out my middle students? Parents can use assessment to make decisions about how to help their children develop their mathematical abilities. Do I need to help my child with his homework? Do I need to get a tutor? Do I need to find a way to challenge them at a higher level? School administrators use assessment to make decisions about the effectiveness of the math programs in their schools. Are we reaching our students? Are we teaching? Are they learning? Do we need to try something else? Public policymakers use assessment to make decisions about the best use of resources and how to maintain mathematics programs of the highest quality. And finally, the public uses assessment to make decisions about the effectiveness of our education system and those who are responsible for it. I know when I move to a new area, one of the first things I do is look at the school districts before we buy our house. We want to make sure that our children are going to an effective dis district. We also may take this into consideration when we are voting for members of the school board. There are two kinds of assessment, formative assessment and summative assessment. This is my favorite quote because I think it really explains the difference. When the cook tastes the soup, that's formative assessment. When the customer tastes the soup, that's summative assessment. As we see from the quote, formative assessment is something that is ongoing it may happen multiple times, it's usually verbal, and it provides feedback that then can then be used to improve performance. When the cook tastes the soup, they can decide it's not salty enough or needs more carrots or other things like that, and there is time to fix it. Summative assessment comes at the end. It's usually numerical, and it's often high-stakes testing. It's too late at that point. The customers tasted the soup, and it's too salty or it tastes horrible, or they don't like the flavor of the vegetables inside. It's too late to fix it. 
Summative assessment is a terminal assessment such as a test and it's given at the end of a unit, a term, a semester, or even the whole school year as in final exams. The purpose is evaluation. In this case, the feedback is too late to address uh, the learning that needs to happen from either the student or the teacher's point of view. There is evidence from the research that summative assessments can adversely affect students. However, given our current nature of our educational system, I don't know how we can avoid it. Here is Calvin and Hobbes, my favorite cartoon, talking about, in general, how people feel about taking summative assessments. Formative assessment. Black and Williams research found that this does help students and their learning. Their report on formative assessment shows, showed a significant effect size. Now an effect size is the ratio of improvement in test scores between the group with the innovation, in this case who had formative assessment, and the group who didn't, or the control group. If we see an effect size of between 0.4 and 0.7, that in general we can say that there was 40 to 70 percent more improvement by the group that had formative assessment. Formative assessment has been found to be particularly effective for students who aren't doing well in school, thus narrowing the gap between the low and the high achievers. So although it works for high achievers, it works even better for low achievers. Therefore, we're raising overall achievement and closing the gap. Here are the references, and if you want any more information, you can go to these. I am having you read the black box article, as you notice that is Black and Williams Research.